Raw day. Good afternoon. <laughs> the great stovetop espresso video at long last. Yes. Yes, we finally got a hot plate and in the in the store. So you're going to demonstrate since this is pros this is the most common prep you do at home. This is this and Turkish are my two favorite ways to do coffee. Okay, all right. Um, and so can you explain for people who don't know what stovetop espresso is? What is it? How does this how does this work? Certainly. Stovetop espresso isn't really true espresso because you're not pumping water through the coffee under pressure. Okay. But what it does is basically make you a very strong, almost espresso-like cup of coffee. Just very concentrated? Correct. Okay. So here's one of the traditional style makers here. It's mm -hmm. composed of several parts. And so basically what you have here is a lower chamber that holds the water. Mm -hmm. It has a safety valve because when you assemble everything and heat it, you're generating steam pressure. So if something happened, you would need something to relieve that pressure so it doesn't blow up and hurt you. Okay. You have the basket, which contains the coffee. Okay. And then the upper portion has a smaller screen and a gasket. So it's not being forced through like um, uh, by bar pressure, but that extraction is happening under steam pressure, right? right? Okay. So it's not the, the nine bars of pressure that traditional espresso extraction is at. But and it's happening at a hotter temp than you're generally looking for? Well, not a, really, because okay. uh, the water in the bottom uh, is being pushed up and as it's being pushed up, it's expanding. So it's actually probably slightly below the boiling point. So okay. I don't know if it's the exact perfect temperature, but uh, I've never found it causes a, an off flavor. Got it. Okay. So to operate it, basically mm -hmm. you fill the bottom section with water. Mm -hmm. In fact, let's do so right now. And you want to fill it right about to the bottom of the safety valve. Okay. And if you fill it above, it does, is that There's, cause some issue? Th they just recommend not to, just for safety reasons. If uh, you overheat it, mm -hmm. the, uh, if the valve's submerged, it may not open properly and relieve the pressure. I see. Okay. And then you insert your basket, and then you add your coffee. We're using <clears throat> Lavazza Creme Gusto, traditional uh, European stovetop uh Espresso blend. Okay, and and what's the grind like? I mean, the compared to an espresso grind, not quite as fine as espresso grind. Okay, but you want it a little finer than you'd use for drip coffee. Okay, so but somewhere in the middle, like somewhere in the like middle. like a fine drip, like that you'd use a for fine pour drip. over. Or? Exactly. Okay, that would work just just fine. Dandy, <laughs> super fine. And the one downside with the stovetop units, mm -hmm. not really a downside, but the thing you have to understand is you have to make it to capacity. Okay. You can't make really a short a short pot. So these. I couldn't take this and say it's just me so I'm just gonna put enough coffee and water in for one no. shot. Okay. There's one stovetop maker we offer that does give you some options. Okay. Uh, that's the Ilsa. That's this guy here. Right. And it's unique in that the basket comes with a little insert so you can either fill it full or you can put the insert in and, and half halfway. fill it okay. and use half as much water. Cool. So with, it's a little more flexible. Right. Okay. Because this needs to, because this is going to form sort of a puck mm -hmm. like a, an espresso machine, just filling one of these half with water isn't really going to work because... You mean with the, coffee? Or half yeah. with coffee. Mm -hmm. Because the coffee is going to be pushed up against this screen. So if it's half full, it's not going to get pushed against the screen. And so basically, do you need that as sort of like a pressure element with building up that steam and getting the water exactly. through? Okay. Got it. The nice thing about these stovetop units is mm -hmm. they'll basically last forever. The only wear item is the gasket. Okay. And my wife and I have been using the same gasket for over a year now. Okay. 
And, so it's uh, a fair amount of use. Short of, you know, breaking the plastic handle, there's really nothing to go wrong with these, which is one reason I like it. So before we start this guy, um, uh, here's just, we just have a few models. This is specifically the Musa, which is the brushed. And then there's the, this is the Venus, which is the shiny. Then right. the Ilsa models that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Over here. We have the Bodum chambered, uh -huh. which is double walled. Actually, this one's not double walled. They do oh. have a double walled version. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, for a little, a little more heat retention. Curvier. Okay. And then this, of course, is the Bialetti sort of classic Mocha pot, the original one, made of aluminum, mm -hmm. but it's chrome plated aluminum, so you're not going to get uh, nasty health effects. Okay. But uh, this one is actually. This is on the one display. that a lot of people are right. most in most uh, familiar with. It's like the old. This, I think it might be the original design that they did. Way this back is the in original the day. design. It's. It's on display at the Museum of Modern Art. It's oh, iconic. cool. <laughs> and then this is the Bialetti Mucca Express, which is a combination stovetop espresso maker and a milk frother. Okay. It, uh, if you add your milk in here, it'll actually use some of the steam to push through the milk. And uh, So does it combine the coffee and the milk yes. together then? Yes. Oh, okay. So you have a one, so one product your in one, thing. It's, it's the one touch of uh, <laughs> stovetop espresso makers. Yes. <laughs> or, or maybe it's a um, 13 touch as opposed to well, a 16 exactly. touch. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start this guy, and it does take a while to get it going. Sure. Um, so well, I think we'll probably just start it going and then come no back problem. when it's up to temp. But. The... Uh, the thing is that uh, you'll, one nice thing about this is it tells you when it starts working. It's going to make noise. Yeah. So uh, we'll wait for it to start gurgling. Okay, we'll be right back. So it's starting its little magic. You can see a little steam it's, coming out. It's gurgling, it's steaming, it's uh, doing its thing. Now with the bigger ones, you want to leave them on the heat a little bit longer, but generally once it starts gurgling and the coffee starts coming out, yeah. you can actually cut the heat off. Oh, because and just let it just let it do finish its thing. on its own story. Oh, uh, if you kept going, would that burn the coffee then? If it was yeah, too much heat, okay. Because uh, at that point, you're heating the upper carafe too that the coffee's in, and you could get an off flavor from from too much temperature. Can we look at it, or do we need Certainly. to keep the pressure? No. Okay. You can see the Gurgle. spouting out. And you see it's a nice thick brew. Mm -hmm. But without the uh, sort of gritty nature of French press. Yeah. And you can throw one of these across the room, which you can't really do with the French press without it breaking. Well, there are some metal ones now these days. Right. That's sort of an innovation <laughs> that, uh, but no that more I glass. can't really go for. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but it is pretty concentrated. So, mm -hmm. like, what is your favorite? Do you drink it straight or do you add more uh, water to it? Or? I generally just drink it straight. Okay. Uh, the six cup size, which is this size here, mm -hmm. uh, will fill one regular American coffee mug. So size accordingly if you want two people to have two good strong cups of coffee for, you know, drugging themselves out of a stupor in the morning. Uh, the <laughs> ten cup would probably be the choice. If you want to make it a one American size cup at a time, the six cup would be better. Okay. Um, but you can, if you like something not as strong, you can mix it with hot water Certainly. or with you hot milk. Right. You can make a cafe au lait. Cafe au lait. Cafe Americano, mm -hmm. so to speak. <laughs> uh, now it's really going. Even though the heat is off, you can see it's really uh, yeah, it's got a lot of doing its business. The magic of steam pressure. This Discovered by Archimedes magical. thousands of years ago, <laughs> and now finally put to uh, to good use. In exactly. Making this stuff. <laughs> Finally, because um, when they were using just like trains to pa be powered by steam, that was just ridiculous. That was ridiculous. I mean, that was just not a good Jared application. J.R. Tolkien had a uh, quote about trains that's not fit for a family video. <laughs> okay, I will trust you on that one, Roddy. I will let you edit yourself. And so do you just keep, you just hang out until... I it's not spurting anymore. Is hang that... out until it's done spurting. Okay. Uh, the heat's off, so uh, you know we could even really take it off the hot plate, but we don't have a trivet upon which to set it, so we'll just leave it where it's at. 
So we are using a rocket lid, actually. Yes, it's a very elegant, expensive <laughs> trivet. Exactly. Uh, you have to buy the rocket machine. Yeah, only seventeen hundred dollars for that exactly. trivet. <clears throat> but uh, we're we're done brewing. Mm -hmm. We have our nice brew in here. Okay. And actually, I should mention in uh, Italy, it's common to use uh, sparkling water in the fill, and uh, you get a bit of a crema to it. It's I know. Sort of, that's the. Are you, you just told me that we fun, should. We uh, definitely need to try it out. I think. It gets a little see, more pizzazz. That's very, very nice brew. It's uh, obviously not true espresso, but you can just tell by the color that it's more than just coffee. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. It's Good very stuff. Yeah. Very, <laughs> very very fuerte. Rich. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So that is the Great Stovetop video. Um, and it's pretty easy to do, flexible. Very easy. To, very you can take it traveling. Nice. Uh, option. The grind of the coffee isn't super uh, fussy, so really any sort of ground coffee will work. Okay. Uh, and uh, but that would if you got something that was too coarse. I mean, would that affect the richness then? Yeah, you wouldn't ultimately. get as rich a flavor. Okay. Uh, but again. One of these and a hand grinder will set you back a hundred bucks and last you the rest of your life. So it's, uh, <laughs> bang for the buck. It's, uh, it's a pretty simple. good way to go. It's not extravagant, is it? It's not extravagant. Uh, <laughs> no electricity required. Uh, you know, no converter plugs. <laughs> no exactly. stressing. Yeah. It's just it works. Cool. All right. So the, those are that's the stovetop video. Thank you so much, Rade. You're quite welcome. Thank you.